2001. So I've, I've had that house since then, but it was rent most of that time until I retired in 2014, see. So I haven't been living in any, for any length of time in Fredericksburg since I left to go to, to school. Okay. Virginia State, you know. Mm -hmm. But I've kept up with things and people and always regularly came home and to see mom and grandma and granddaddy and everybody else, you know. Absolutely. Um, I guess after all this COVID business is done, um, are you planning to come back? Oh, yeah, I'll be going home in the next, uh, probably after Thanksgiving. I'm just here, going to be stay here through Thanksgiving. Because, you know, I would used to go back and forth more frequently, but I'm limiting the time on airplanes and stuff like that for obvious reasons. Yeah. So I, I was home for about three months in Fredericksburg, so I've been here with my husband for about three months. So, you know, I've got to go back and check on the house and stuff like that. Even though Xavier has a key and my cousins have a key, but, you know, they probably go feed the, feed the, for the plants just before I tell them I'm getting ready to land. You know how that goes. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> This particular project, just the okay. the history of Fredericksburg. Oh, and, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Well, and, I'm going to think of some other things, probably and most likely, that I can. Uh, when I think of them, I will shoot you a note, and okay. then I can share them with you because, you know, your questions bring about memories of things that I may have that I may have slipped. You know what I mean? Yes, ma'am. You, know, you know, there was a black, we had a black policeman by the name of James Dyson. Are you familiar with him? Yes. Um, okay. I'm trying to remember, um, I think it was Mr. Frank White last week who mentioned um, him yes. to me. And my granddaddy wrote a editorial about him, too. He was commending the first black uh, policeman, and he said, but the city sent him to the most raucous neighborhood in town. He said, where they curse and stay up half the night. And he said, I just hope that they will not, bottom line, they don't, you know, just take advantage of him down there. My grandfather, did, in other words, he took care of us as well as them. He didn't, he did not, I mean, he called it like he saw it. He didn't care what color you were. And, and, that, and to me, that's the best type of person, and it he makes for to. a good leader. You got to. You yeah. got to. You really do. But, yeah, he has an article, uh, a letter to the editor about this, um, Dyson and all like that. All of those things are, I have originals for all that stuff. Isn't that amazing? Renata kept all that stuff. And Mama kept it, you know. And I inherited it, and I, started, I wrote the book. As part of this project, there's another piece of it. We're developing a civil rights slash black history trail in the city oh. of Fredericksburg. Mm -hmm. um, and documents like the ones that you have um, are fascinating. Um, not Maybe not having the originals, but maybe a picture of... Well, I cannot tell you how pleased I am because I want them to be where they will be utilized, seen, and, you know, I, I, I would love it. And what I did, I have digitized most of them. Well, I didn't. Somebody helped me do it. But I have the originals, and if they could be in a safe place, I would be 
honored to turn them over to the university. I would be very honored. Um, part of, well, thank you for offering because um, I'm co-leading this effort with the city of Fredericksburg. Um, okay. And part of the uh, UMW's um, part in this is we have our special collections okay. the library for the university. Okay. And they would definitely be in safekeeping um, here and we also have um, our historic preservation department okay. and history and American studies department. And two of the professors from those departments are part of the team that I um, you know, constituted. Um, well, Chris, you got yourself a deal because uh, they are. Uh, Mark Olson went out and got me this paper to keep them in. So when you would handle them, they are. I think they call it acid free or something like that. So I have them in those covers. You know, as I was perusing them for my research, but I have all of those things there, and I would be very, very comforted knowing that they're going to be in a good place, a place where they'll be used. Oh, most definitely, because, you know, I, my vision for this, um, not only Oral Histories Project, but the Black History slash Civil Rights Trail, is to have uh -huh. first-hand accounts of stories okay. like yours, okay. but also complementary pieces like documentation. Um, well, uh, you got, you have my grandfather's collection with all the respect and gratitude for being able to keep these in the place where generations from ours will be able to benefit from them and hopefully learn from them. And that has just made my day, and I cannot thank you enough. Oh, you're very welcome, and thank you for entrusting me. Um, yes. You know, with these treasured items, because that's what they are. They are treasured. Well, my grandfather believed so in education, uh, as you would you will see. So I think he would be very, very, very pleased about it. And I had thought about Virginia Union, his alma mater, but this is the place he um, grew up. He, he received an honorary doctor from Virginia Union, and all those papers and newspaper articles and letters from the president of the university, where he was uh, unanimously decided that it was unanimously determined he would receive that. All that is in there, too. I have all those letters signed from the president, then president of Virginia Union and all like that. So it's history just beyond Granddaddy, too. You know, it kind of states them, state stuff also. Wow. Um, you know, I I definitely understand your, um, you know, thought process with, you know, handing them over to Union. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I think about Shiloh Old Site is literally five minutes from here. <laughs> yes, I know. That's uh, what I'm saying. This is this is the only church that he pastored, you know. Yes. Shiloh Old Site. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the school, the Mayfield High School. So everything he did. Oh, he did have another teaching job before, and that was at the uh, Mayfield Mayfield High School in Kentucky. And I have uh, the certificate where he was, what do you call it, when they accredit you that you can teach and do certain things in certain states. I have that too. Granddaddy kept stuff, so I guess Mama got it natural, you know. Well, and thank, thankfully they did keep everything. I know. And thankfully I decided that I wasn't just going to toss that stuff when I got out all those boxes that I started looking, and I said, well, Thank you, Jesus, you know? Yes. But I found that stuff, I just, I just wish Mama could be here for me to say, Mama, I'm so glad you told me to get these things and save, save this material. I'm so glad, you know? Oh, absolutely. Um, and just such a credit to really, you know, their foresight. Um, yeah. Yeah. And for, for us, you know, our generation and beyond to be able oh, wow. to, you know, see um, yeah. these documents and, and 
It's such and I would have never known my grand, great-grandfather was a, a slave. You know, because granddad 